Welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show, featuring the head coach of the Nickel State University baseball team, Seth Thibodeau. Today's program is presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. The Seth Thibodeau Show is also sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Good afternoon and welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. I'm your host, Mike Wagenheim. We've got plenty coming up in today's program. We're joined, as always, by the head coach of the Colonels, Seth Thibodeau. Welcome, my friend. Thanks, Wags. Really excited about the a big week ahead of us. You know, we, we talked last week and you were coming off a sweep at the hands of southeastern Louisiana and then had a, a fine effort against Tulane, picked up a win there. That pattern re- repeated itself this week. It sure did, and, and, and unfortunately we didn't play our best baseball, but we had chances to, to be victorious in, in, in that series and have a chance to win that series, and we just didn't get that big hit when we needed it. Well, we're going to talk about the week that was and the week that's uh, coming up here as we uh, go throughout the day. The Colonels opened up the weekend set against Texas A&M Corpus Christi here in Thibodeau on Friday night. Got off to a good start. Mike Stook fan a pair in the first. He gets all south and honoree Gonzalez. Jonathan Gonzalez there. But things go sour in the second. Bases loaded, two outs. Leadoff man Cody Stevens bounces one up the middle. Brad Porras and Zach Taylor score. The Islanders played five runs in the frame, all with two outs. Stevens with a pair of hits and three RBIs on the night. Now, top of the third, two outs. It's Russell Vaughn with a run scoring hit to right. And that chased Taylor home six to nothing in favor of Corpus Christi. Now, the Colonels would get on the board in the fourth inning. Bases loaded, two outs, and the 3 2 pitch from Trevor Foss to Cody Dufran misses. Cody reached base all four times he came to the plate. Brandon Jackson scored here as Dufran is credited with an RBI. But Nichols left him loaded in the fourth, then stranded two in scoring position in the fifth as Foss fans keep Cormier. The Colonels left 15 men on that night. Foss went six innings, allowing a run on five hits. He struck out six. The Islanders would pile it on late. Eric Weiss with a two-out, two-run hit in the seventh. Weiss with three hits and four batted in. Corpus Christi runs away with the opener, 13-1. to Brandon Jackson registered a pair of hits for Nichols. Not the start to the weekend that you envisioned. No, but that's going to happen throughout a season. You're going to have these games where, you know, the other team uh, really comes out banging, and a lot of good things happen for them. They have some good baseball fortune. But unfortunately, the way we were been playing nip and tuck with in tight, tight ball games, it just kind of looks, you know, like, oh no, here we go again. But, uh, you know what? We took really pitched it well. We just didn't get off the field with two outs and we didn't get the big hit when we had an opportunity to do it. And that's what happens in those types of games. Fortunately, you were able to bounce back, and this was a competitive final two days, very competitive, oh and, and, and it showed what this team is made of. They didn't let that Friday night game get Absolutely, down. and like I tell our guys, uh, and told them, you know, last night in our team meeting, you know, we're, we're three or four hits away from being in first place, and, and maybe a couple of innings of getting off the field with two outs from being in first place. So you're, we're right there. We're knocking on the doorstep, and, and, and the baseball guys, the, the fortune will turn in our way soon. It eventually does. It all evens out in the end. Game two here on Saturday, a quality Southland Conference game. Senior Corey DeLang toes the rubber for Nichols. He was coming off one of his best outings of the season, hoping to pick up right where he left off. But it wasn't so early. Top of the second after a leadoff double by Brad Porras. Zach Taylor punches one over the bag and down the right field line. Porras scores. Taylor recorded his second multi-hit game of the series. In the third... Jordan Lee in scoring position with two out. Jonathan Gonzalez chops it over the mound. Tough play here for Brandon Jackson, and he throws it away. Infield hit, and the error allows Lee to score two to nothing Islanders, and that unearned run would loom very large in the end. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Colonels at bat. A pair on with one gone for Seth Stevens. The offering from Trevor Belichick sliced into center. Whites can't make the play. It goes down as a double for Stevens. One of three hits for him. Keith Cormier scores, and we got ourselves a one-run ball game. Then, with the bases loaded and two outs, Matt Richard at the plate, and he's struggling with an injury right now. Tyler Duplantis is given the green light for a steal of home. Too close to call, even in slow motion as we watched it. Duplantis is ruled out. It remains 2-1 to one corpus. DeLang settles in. He gets Brandon Tierney to bounce into a double play to end a six-inning threat. DeLang went seven, giving up one earned run on eight hits with two walks and six strikeouts. Again, the Colonels have their opportunities to support him. Two on with one out in the six coming up here, but reliever O'Shea Dooms 
would put out the fire. He gets Mike Barber looking to retire the side. Dooms tossed two and two-third innings of scoreless ball in support of Belichick. Now, Nichols' closer Jordan McCoy was dominant, too. He fans his side in the eighth, getting Tierney to commit here. Nichols gets the appeal. McCoy fanned five in just two frames, allowing only one base runner. The Colonels put the tying run in scoring position in the ninth. Jacob Doris, the closer for Corpus Christi, shuts the door. He gets Leo Vargas to pop out to end it. Nichols falls 2-1 to one as the series goes to the Islanders. Coach, uh, I know this one was a, a tough one to swallow in many respects. You got aggressive there with the stolen base, the attempted steal of home. Right now, Matt Richard, and we, we saw him, he would eventually sit out Sunday's game and Tuesday's contest as well. He's struggling right now, and you're trying to find different ways to score. Absolutely. We're trying to be aggressive. We're not going to sit back and wait for it to happen. We have to be the aggressor there, and and uh, we had an opportunity there. We saw something we liked, and uh, he sped up his delivery a little, a little bit and, and his timing, which kind of threw us off a little bit. But I still felt like we had it in there. It was a bang-bang play. It caught the umpire you know, by surprise a little bit, but... Uh, that's part of it. You know, we're, if, if we're going to make our mistakes, we're going to make them aggressively. Unfortunately, now Richard will be on the shelf for a little bit, uh, dealing with a back injury that he aggravated last year. And that, that really changes a lot of things for it him. It does. You try to find that, that guy that gets on base. And, and you know, uh, good teams, our teams always take the personality of, of one of their better players. And, and Matt's such a grinder, and he's always coming up with that big hit or always getting on base and scoring a run when you absolutely need him to. So it's important for us to find someone that can pick up the slack for him. Now the finale of this ball game, of the series rather, on Sunday, as the Colonels trying to avoid the sweep, the ball was given to Taylor Bird, who was looking to bounce back from a couple of rough outings. Much like Corey DeLang's the uh, day before, it did not look good early. After walking leadoff man Cody Stevens, Brad issues a free pass to Zach Taylor, two walks on ten pitches, and those would come back to bite him and the Colonels. Following a one-out single by uh, Gonzalez to load the bases, Brad Porras' ground ball just eludes Phillip Lyons behind second. Stevens and Taylor score. Porras with two of the Islanders' six hits on the day. Now, Corpus Christi would give right-hander Matt Danton a spot start. He had just one start under his belt all year, but the Islanders liked his consistency, and that turned out to be a good gamble for them. He faced just one over the minimum through the first six innings. He gets Mike Barber looking here to end the third. This turned out to be a duel between Danton and Bird, a terrific finale. Now, Taylor gets some help in the fourth. After a leadoff hit and a wild pitch, Jordan Lee singles to right, Paris being waved in from third. Keith Cormier firing home. Cody Dufran seals off the plate. Nichols keeps the deficit at two. Bird went on to retire 11 straight batters starting in that inning. He lasted seven in the third. But... Same story for the Colonels. Base is loaded, bottom seven. After Seth Stevens pops out, Danton gets Tyler Duplantis to hit the comebacker, starting the 1-2-3 double play, and the rally is snuffed out. On to the ninth. Nichols down to their final strike. Stevens keeps them alive. Base hit to right. Leo Vargas would score from second. Cormier goes from corner to corner. We've got a one-run ball game, and Matt Richard would come on as a pinch runner for Stevens. Corpus Christi head coach Scott Malone would go to his bullpen. Danton goes eight and two-thirds, allowing six hits with no walks and five strikeouts. For the second straight day, the Islanders turn the ball over to their closer, Jacob Doris, the soft-throwing sidewinder looking for save number seven on the year. Again, the Colonels down to their final strike. Doris seals a deal with a strikeout of Tyler Duplantis. The second straight, two-to-one defeat for the Colonels as Corpus earns a sweep. They improved to 19 and 12 overall, 6 and 3 in the South, and while Nichols drops to 15 and 18 on the year and 1 and 8 in league play. That was a terrific Sunday duel. It absolutely was. Two really good uh, arms going at each other, pretty good, and, and uh, we needed that big hit. We had some opportunities and just didn't get it done. Unfortunately for the Colonels, that's been the story of the last couple of weekends. Now you have five, count them, five one run losses in conference play. It's there for the take. It is. Three or four hits away from being in first place. That's what I tell him. That's how easy it is. That's how simple this game is. But it's a new season for us right now. We have our last third of our season. We're ready to, uh, you know, play these next 21 baseball games with, with some championship effort and put ourselves in a position for the postseason. Well, Nichols was looking for a big pick-me-up on Tuesday night as they headed to Mobile to face the South Alabama Jaguars, who were off to a 24-9 and start and featured one of the nation's most potent offenses and a lockdown bullpen. The Colonels would start Brandon Jackson while South Al gave Andrew Fonzie a shot. He hadn't pitched in over a month. 
Let's take a look at these highlights. The Colonels jump on Fonzie in the first with two outs. Tyler Duplantis gaps one into left center. Philip Lyons and Keith Cormier score, and that was just what the doctor ordered. They weren't done. A couple of batters later, Cody Dufran would come up to the plate. The Colonels were excited to play this ball game. Dufran belt to base hit the left. That would score Duplantis Nichols with a three-run first inning, and they controlled this game pretty much from start to finish. Now Jackson, who doubled as a DH, he was cruising along, facing the minimum through four. He gets Nolan early to bounce into the double play after walking the leadoff man in the second. Jackson was making only his second start all year. He was up to the task. In the third, Nichols strikes again with two out. The hard ground ball, and a single here by Seth Stevens, chases in Jackson. Fonzie was gone after three innings, and Nichols was up 4 nothing. Now Jackson gets in trouble in the fifth. Bases loaded, no outs. He pulls a Houdini. Fanning Robbie Campbell here, he'd strike out the next batter and then get a ground out to escape. Now after working out of another jam in the sixth, his luck finally runs out in the seventh. Bases loaded, no outs again. Hayden Jones delivers a pinch hit sack fly. Cole Jarman would score from third on the tag up. It's a four to one ball game at that point. And that was it for Jackson, but the bullpen did the rest. Mark Piciola gets a club out of the seventh and then wiggles out of the eighth with a strikeout of Dustin Dawkins here. South Alabama stranded nine in the final five innings. The Colonels win it 4-1. to one. Nichols has won its last three in Mobile, and they split the season series with the Jags down the middle. They're going to wind up hanging your jersey up in Mobile. <laughs> we played well there. We, we have played, traditionally played well there. Our guys were relaxed. They played good baseball, and, uh, you know, it was fun to watch them compete like that. It just every every phase was clicking. You yeah. just wish you could you could pull that out to the weekend and yes. and duplicate that. And we absolutely will. I'm feeling pretty good about that, and our guys know it. Hey, come on, this is time to get going now. So we're ready. We have you know two thirds of our conference schedule left, and 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 this is our season. This is our time. This is our chance and our opportunity to do what we need to do to be successful and and, and capitalize on our goals that we have set for the season. Some quality out of conference wins. Just got to get it done on the weekend. Now we've got much more coming up. On the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State, in, uh, State Farm Insurance, we'll be right back with more in a moment. Does State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. <laughs> that ships them off to some bundle factory. <laughs> I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players, we love the fans, and you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse's. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork, or pick up Rouse's ready to serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game, and you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgating. I'm sorry, say that again. You know, when we hired Mike three years ago, we knew he was a great radio broadcaster. The offering coming. Stevens takes a cut, drives it to right field. This girl is on fire. The offering coming. Stevens with a swing, deep drive to right field. Yahtzee. The delivery on the way. Stevens drives it deep right field. You hang it. Well, bang it. Still working on that one great catchphrase that'll put him over the top. The delivery, Stevens with a swing, deep drive right field, bartender, Jack. He has a stretch in the pitch, Stevens deep to right field, I'm going to pop some tags. Back with you on the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. Nickel State University and the city of Thibodeau are inextricably linked. The Colonel Baseball Program is doing its part to help the city blossom. In return, the man in charge shows his support for the red and gray. Pamela Johnson has a story. The motive was community pride as the city of Thibodeau celebrated its 175th year of existence last month. With a population of nearly 15,000, Thibodeau has maintained a slow but steady growth pace over the past 20 years. The presence of Nickel State University is one of the driving forces behind the city's success, and one man has made it a goal to strengthen the bond between Nichols and the Queen City of Lafourche Parish. 
He's chosen the Colonel's baseball program as a vehicle to do it. Thibodeau's mayor, Tommy Eshte, has been a longtime supporter of Nichols, as he is also an alumnus of the university. He was able to get his feet wet in politics during his college years by serving as an active member in the Student Government Association. Going back to a student, I unfortunately was not involved in athletics. Uh, uh, my extracurricular activity at Nichols involved, uh, I was involved with student government. Uh, but I was an active member of uh, an officer in a, in a social fraternity at Nichols. Mayor Eshte not only advocates for Nichols in general, but he is also a fan and active supporter of Colonel Athletics. Over the years, Eshte has developed a special bond with the baseball team's head coach, Seth Thibodeau. The two have since been collaborating on efforts to strengthen the relationship between the program and the community. I can tell you that, that the head coach, Seth Thibodeau, certainly made a connection with the city. Uh, he's made a connection with our community and he's made a special effort to make sure the kids uh, become a part of not only of the university but a part of Thibodeau and, and that's special to me. Uh, I know it's special to our citizens and uh, making that special effort means that I should make a special effort to support them and that's mostly why I'm here. Uh, very fortunate to have uh, Mayor Este. Uh, Thibodeau is to be just a really good leader for this this this, this community, this city, and Nichols is very fortunate to have someone like him who is a big supporter of, of our university and he's a big supporter of our baseball program. He's become a very good friend of mine. And he's just a really good person, a great leader. There's, no, there's not anything bad you can say about the guy. I just I'm very appreciative to uh, to have met him and have the relationship with him. And Nichols is very fortunate to have him as the, as the mayor of Thibodeau as well. Due to its numerous positive impacts on the city of Thibodeau, Mayor Eshte stresses the important need for the community's support of the region's university. You look at, at, at what Nichols means to the city of Thibodeau, and I, I like to compare it to uh, what, would, what would we be without the university? And, and I think that's a little, bit, that's a little scary. Uh, if you look at it from a standpoint of there's some 7,500 students or approximately there, thereabout. Uh, that visit our city every day, in, in addition to the 15,000 people who live here. And then that, that doesn't even include the staff and administration on campus. So uh, it does make Thibodeau an active uh, community, uh, especially from Mondays through Fridays. As a leader himself, the mayor was impressed at how Nichols coaches and administrators handled recent budget cuts that affected institutions throughout Louisiana. As Shay noted that the quality of service the university offered was never compromised and that Nichols is on firm footing moving forward. Dr. Hoban and his staff has continued to find innovative ways to, to be creative about the, of, of how they address those cuts and, and where they can make the cuts that will least affect the student, which is really uh, the most important part of, of, of the university being here. They always find a way to continue to provide what I consider first-class uh, services to their students, which is important. It's kind of scary to think about Thibodeau without Nickel State University uh, from a standpoint, not just economically, but uh, how, much, how much less we would be on the map, so to say, uh, without a four-year state university. And like I said, it's been here for over 60 years now, and um, I don't know that I can envision Thibodeau without Nickel State. The recent success of the city of Thibodeau and the Nichols baseball program mirror each other and there's great reason to believe that with the support from the mayor and other members of the community, this university and team will keep serving as a positive influence on a thriving area that continues to grow. For the Seth Thibodeau Show, I'm Pamela Johnson. Thank you very much, Pamela. Back in studio here with the head coach Seth Thibodeau. The mayor supports you guys, and the reason I know he supports you is because you support this community. Uh, we saw some shots there visiting a local hospital, doing some cleanup work in the area as well, and I know that's big for you personally. Yeah, we enjoy it. I want our guys giving back and, and not always having their hand out. And uh, We also help out with Dixie Youth, and really and truly, we, everything that's ever been asked of us, Thibodeauville, whatever it may be, we're always there to help out, and, and I have utmost respect for, for Mayor Ashte and, and the hard work that he does and the leader that he is. We're going to uh, talk more coming up here. We'll take a quick break. Up next on the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance, we'll head out to the gridiron for the start of fall practice, and we'll speak with Coach Tibb about this, the uh, club series this weekend here coming up against Central Arkansas. Stay with us. We're back in a moment.
Does State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. That ships them off to some bundle factory. I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. Nickel State University is taking education on the road, the information superhighway. If you are unable to come to campus, we are bringing the campus to you. Study at home and graduate quicker with Nichols Online. No more going to class around the school's schedule. Go to class online around your schedule. All of your courses are taught by qualified Nichols State University professors who are experts in their fields. To take that step, go to nichols.edu slash Nichols Online or email Nichols Online at nichols.edu. At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players, we love the fans, and you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse's. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork, or pick up Rouse's ready-to-serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game, and you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgating. Back with you on the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. We'll get back with Coach Tibbs shortly. Right now, Ashley Dufran recaps the week that was in Nichols Athletics. Here at Nichols State University, the Colonel softball team is coming off of a critical weekend series that was decided in extra innings as the club creeps closer to a possible Southland Conference tournament berth. And it's time for some football as the team starts to prepare for what's to come in the fall. The Colonel softball program was victorious in their series this weekend in Hammond against rival Southeastern Louisiana taking two of the three games. On Saturday, Nichols defeated the Lions in game one of a doubleheader 3-2 to two as freshman Danielle Phillips delivered an RBI triple in the sixth. But in game two, a pair of unearned runs came back to bite Nichols as they fell 7-6. to six. In the rubber match on Sunday, Nichols racked up a season-high 14 hits, leading to a 7-6 win in eight innings. The Colonels are now 18 and 20 overall and 8 and 7 in conference play. We won our first one and the last one, like the one in the middle, we kind of gave up. We always tend to have like one of those big innings, but we're trying to eliminate that. Our hitting finally came around. There wasn't a hole in our lineup. Every part of our lineup really picked each other up and we did a really good job. That was good. I mean, it was fun competition. I enjoyed coming back from like behind. I played we stepped together as a team. It was, it was exciting. Nichols seems to be hitting on all cylinders as of late, marking a turnaround from their early season struggles. The Colonels are feeding off of each other's performances to make themselves stronger. In the beginning of the season, we moved our lineup around and we couldn't really find people to fill in positions. We had a lot of injuries and that hurt us. But now we have like a set lineup and we're really going off of each other well. Everyone's picking each other up. If someone doesn't do it in the lineup, the next person does. And if someone does do it, then it's contagious and we keep doing really well. With the Colonel's bats coming alive, freshman Haley Parkinson was named the Southland Conference Softball Hitter of the Week. In the last five games, she hit 11 of 21 and has now reached base in 17 straight games. It was exciting. I had no idea. My best friend, Elena, my third baseman, told me. I didn't know what to do with myself. But um, I just wanted to help my team win, and I was praying God would use me in any way. I wasn't expecting that, but it was exciting, and I'm happy. The Colonel football team returned to the field on Tuesday for the start of spring practice. While some players have been working in the offseason as a group, they're now ready to join in with their coaches. We've been out here a little bit as a team without our coaches. We've been, we've been grinding on ourselves, but to have the coaches out here is going to be a big deal to make us work hard. Not only are the players excited to get back to work, but so is the coaching staff as they prepare for the upcoming season. Ever since the last play of the last game, you're always wanting to get back and because you can only get better by just getting out and working. And we had an excellent off-season strength and conditioning program. Uh, we're coming into it relatively healthy right now. We still have our young men that had some surgeries that they're not able to participate fully right now. But we're out here right now. We have about in the low 80s participating right now. The attitude is tremendous. That's what I really measure a lot of things on. And that's what I tell the young men. There's two things they control, their attitude and their effort. And I really believe those were positives today. Great attitude and great effort. 
Nichols will hold 12 practices, and each of them are open to the public. The Colonels wrap up the spring season with their annual scrimmage on Saturday, April 27th. For the Seth Thibodeau Show, I'm Ashley Dufresne. Thank you very much, Ashley. And congratulations, by the way, to freshman outfielder Haley Parkerson. We saw her earlier. She was named the Southland Conference Softball Hitter of the Week. Parkerson had an outstanding week at the plate and a strong contender for our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week presented by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. Rouse's Supermarkets are local with their roots established in Thibodeau in 1923. Trust Rouse's for great food and great values. Louisiana's best can be found at your local Rouse's or at Rouse's.com. Well, Haley was a contender, but this week we salute Jamie Springer. The junior Javelina took the gold medal at the Skechers SFA Alumni Invitational in Nacogdoches, Texas on Saturday. That now marks three Javelin titles this season in four meets for Jamie. Her winning toss of 147 feet, 11 inches, bested her previous mark, personal mark, by four inches. Congratulations to Jamie Springer. Been good all season long. Well, we're going to wrap things up here on the uh, Seth Thibodeau Show. Coach, you head to Central Arkansas this weekend. They have 24 wins already this year. They're 8-5, and five, or 4-5, and five rather, in conference. They just defeated Grambling 30 to nothing on Tuesday. Almost unheard of, and they're outstanding at home this year. They've only lost one time on their home field. This was a series. You remember going back to the first pitch bank when I was there, and to a man, the seniors, almost to a man, said this was a series more than any other that the Colonels were looking forward to. Now you got your shot this weekend in Conway. We do. They're a very talented baseball team, but more importantly, they they do not beat themselves, and that's really important in college baseball. And I know that sounds, you know, silly, but it's it's such a fact. And and they do a fantastic job of getting on base. Their on base percentage is is phenomenal. Uh, they do a great job of walking and and winning the freebie war, which they've done all season long. Um, so it'll be a challenge for us, but you know I like this trip. I like the opportunity. I like when when our backs against the wall a little bit, and we have a chance to come out and and, and punch back. Um, our, our guys are motivated. They're ready to get on that bus and go there, and we're excited about the challenge. And and, and really and truly, it's there's, there's no such thing as a as a problem. There's an opportunity there for us, and and we're excited about what we can do this weekend. And, and numbers don't mean anything at, at this time of the year. It's, it's blood and guts, and it's time for us to make sure we're on the right side of the stick. Well, listen, the last two years, you guys were counted out at about this point in the season. Two years ago, you still made the postseason. Yeah. Last year, you got it down to the final day before succumbing. This team is a fighting team. Absolutely, and, you know, we're a series away from being right back where we want to be. So um, it's it's the next challenge. Where let's go over there on Friday and take care of our business on Friday. It's all we can control right now, and, and we're excited about that. Our goal is to win every season, every series we possibly can, and, and, and what we need to do is remember that this is a new season for us, and our guys are motivated for the stretch. And we, it, Good teams are a good stretch run team, so uh, we're excited about this challenge right here. Coach, we're looking forward to it, and we're going to Thank talk you. again next week. Sounds good. Thanks so much. The head coach of the Colonels, Seth Thibodeau, here joining us on his weekly program. We'll carry Saturday and Sunday's games for you from Conway on the radio. Don't forget the Colonels are back here Tuesday hosting UL Lafayette, and then next weekend taking on McNeese State. We'll talk about the weekend series against UCA and the home game against UL Lafayette coming up on our program next Thursday afternoon. That's going to do it. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks for joining us. Today's show has been presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. This show has also been sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network.